Well, build my gallows and build them high Makes a long time climbing before I die I want the chance to spit in his eye well, he gave me balls, but I can see between To a dusty yard and a long gone green They call that freedom, if you know what I mean And I drown my sorrows, but the whiskey's gone I'm sober as good Hello everybody, welcome to Long Bangers I'm Matty, this is episode 121 We've got uh, Colin on tonight, Colin, how are you doing? Good evening, I'm well, how are you? Alright, good mate, good mate, you've been up to much? Today, or just in general? Just in general, mate uh, no, <laughs> I just back for the well. I see just back for the dog walk. Back about an hour ago for the dog walk. Um, working the day and that was about it because I didn't really watch much football yesterday at all. But you? Nah, uh, same. I watched. Uh, didn't watch football. I watched. There uh, was a it's a Howard Kendall that was the uh, Everton Everton. manager documentary on the. Uh, Sky documentaries about him. It's fucking really oh, good. Right. Didn't really tell it was like called Howard's Way or something like that. Which obviously that used to be a TV program. That was another wasn't TV. It? Aye. Aye. That was. Um but they didn't actually tell you that much about Howard Kendall. It was mainly about the players talking about the time and everything that they were having. But so it was Andy Gray and all that, was it? Aye, he, he he was yeah. on it, no sexism, which was good. No. Um no. that Mevel South Hall was on Sky after all these years. Aye, loud back just for that. Uh I, I can't what you could remember. It was obviously when we were we and Liverpool were the dominant team. We uh, combined yeah, Everton. Everton had a great team. Aye, they did. They, they won the league and uh, run Liverpool close in the next season. I'm not sure yeah, if they, they won it then. Final a couple of times aye. as well with a mind. Yeah. Aye, they were uh, they were a good team. So that was interesting. And there was a Ron Atkinson one after on after that, but I recorded that. Never watched it. No, no Ron Atkinson. Uh, Terry Venables. Oh, I didn't even get for fancy that one. I watched the aye. United one, the United Way or something there at Canada. I want to watch aye, that. Aye, that, eh? that was good. That was good. Aye, it was quite good. Quite like all these uh, these things, eh? I, I like the Canada one where he said, eh, "Any of the boys lie, any regrets about eh, kicking the boy in the crowd?" <laughs> and he's like, "Yes, yes." And you can just got to say, "Oh, I wish I'd never done it." So, I would have kicked him harder next time. Oh, <laughs> harder. <laughs> or I should have kicked him harder or aye. something. Eh? Some boy Canada. Mm. He was. Uh, I mind that night, I worked at McDonald's at the time and uh, I was on a, I don't think I was on a close, but it was on a late shift anyway, so maybe a 10 o'clock finish. Aye. And in fact, it must have been because I'd gone in to get changed 10 o'clock and it was on the news and they were yeah. playing the footage yet. I remember standing just like, it was a wee, kind of, one of the wee old crappy TVs you used to get in the in the staff room. Just standing and just going, fucking hell. What you never even caught that well, though, eh? but it was nah. amazing, like the, the effort. Oh, done. But what you what you you miss is everybody said mean they, they reported it as a kung fu style kick, mm. but he gets up and swings a punch at the boy as well. It's not just like the one the one hit; he goes yeah. for him again. Aye, it was good. Need more than that, eh? Aye. There's uh, there's definitely like Decano was like kind of obviously Decano played for Celtic. But he had that kind of lunatic mm. side to him as well. That you were like, yeah. you've got to respect that a bit. Aye. Mind he, uh, need their per- personalities in football. Aye, he caught a boy. Who were they playing? Was it West Ham or so? He uh, played for West Ham. Aye, he was playing for West Ham. It might have been against Everton or something. I think like it that. was. Aye. And instead of scoring, they caught the ball. I didn't care if he meant. I could, I could instinctively did it and then was like, I could come out of this looking like a right good country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aye. Aye. I think so. I think he meant. He lives off that now. Like. Oh, aye. Uh, but I quite, quite, uh, quite good to have the BAMs in the game. No enough of them. Um, right, speaking of BAMs and stuff like that, both forgot. No game to talk about for Saturday because COVID hit Hibs. And uh, aye, so the game got postponed. We were talking about it before we started. The the tweets for folk were quite funny. The the, the boy complains he's halfway there, and some of the replies says that you're halfway home now. <laughs> That's funny. Aye. That's what oh, they need. Right. Imagine the rage. Imagine aye. the rage of the boy getting that reply. You'll be able to laugh now, but Saturday lunch time we would never laugh. Aye, at the time we'd be calling for that all, all sorts. Of, um, so we will go back and I think we weren't going to really bother talking about the Celtic game had we played Ross County, but because there was no game in between, we should probably cover it. Uh, we were both there. Did you manage to get in without getting fucking soaked? Just about. Uh, I kind of was raining, but it wasn't torrential until I got up to the top of the the stand which is covered got my vaccine passport checked did you on the way in aye um, I see check they just basically 
wanted to make sure they could see a barcode on my phone. Nobody scanned it or anything like that. It was just, but I did get a check. They were checking everybody on the way in at the bit I came in, which is the the way stand at the way end, coming in for yeah. the Sainsbury's car park. Yeah, they were checking everybody, and that was about quarter past seven, quarter past seven. Um, so I got that checked and missed most of the rain, so I wasn't too wet sitting there uh, watching it. I got soaked, absolutely, absolutely drenched. Found it in my big uh, parka jacket, isn't it waterproof? That was a fucking annoying discovery. Uh, I done that one day with work going to work when you stay, there was pissing rain and I had this, like, can you know, we could go things you get, like the wee Adidas ones with the hood and that. And I was walking down the down, down that street and I'm going down the, down the road, pissing with rain. And, and I'm well, I've got my wee could go and I'll be all right. I got to work and opened up my t shirt was fucking ringing. I had to get the heaters on in the changing rooms and try. Aye. Dry it, dry it off. Just fucking soaked. Waterproof Brutal. jacket, and it's not waterproof. Aye. Brutal. So we we ended up uh, half time stood up, and there was just a fucking big puddle underneath us. Where the water just been dripping off us, and uh, two minutes after I got home to dry out, okay, that's coming back to the vermin. Mm. Ever still sod and so that was a pish start. I never got my passport check, uh, my, my vaccine passport checked though. We were straight in, but we were about 10 minutes before kickoff. So maybe by that point they were like, like we've done enough, can met a met a mm-hmm. quota or whatever. So we were we were straight in, time for a pie to try and get some heat in. And then uh, the game itself, how uh, what did you think of it? Um it wasn't very good. It was first half was <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were good. I think I think we said it on Quick Bang after the game, but I think it was about seven minutes in that I went to go and text you and you that they text me saying this is gonna be a long fucking night. Um, because it was just one way traffic. I think, I think you and or somebody might have said that they never touched the ball for the first two minutes. Aye. Um, it was just it was just one one way traffic. It was terrible, and it could have been could have been many. I think um, Newell missed the chance uh, at one nil. I'm no that was very much against the running play. I'm not convinced that that would have been a turning point in the game. I think the Murphy chance at three one was a bigger turning point because they had to take the foot off the gas by that time. We had changed the formation a wee bit and had a kick up the arse and stuff. Um but uh at least we got a couple of shots on target, I suppose. Aye. I think that was the positive I'm taking for it. But other than that, there wasn't <laughs> very many positives. Nah, there were any, I think the first touch we had was George Doig knocking the ball out. I think it was either yeah. like a tackle or he'd got on the ball and then run out of play. Because I, I, it was almost at the point, Kim, you're looking at the clock. And I said to the boy next to us, I think we've touched the ball yet. It was two minutes in. Brutal. Mm. Like, right. right. uh, uh, Newell's chance was a was a, a big moment in the game. And I can you're probably right that it wouldn't really have changed anything. The only thing is, it might have given the hip players a bit of lift in. Might have, yeah. You know, just to say, yeah. right, we've been shite, but we're not out of this game yet. Yeah, I think he took an extra touch when I've watched the back. It's like he, it's a nice ball from Murphy, I think. He takes a decent first touch in his right foot. He takes a touch and then he shoots. I think it, he was almost trying to drag it back to his left foot too much that it gave the goalie time to make sure it was covered. And it was just, it was probably easier for the goalie to save it at that point. It, it was that extra touch. I think if he'd caught it earlier, he might have, he might have, even though he might not have connected with it as well, he would have been aiming at a bigger target probably because kind of, the goalie wasn't set. Um, but I've not been in that position. I don't know if I'm talking shit or not. I just I think he took an extra touch. Aye, it's one of the ones you have to score at. Kim, you look at it, and I don't yeah. think it's an easy, easy chance. You know, I think chances at that level are very rarely easy, but it's an easier chance, and he'll get most of the time against Celtic. And you're a couple of yards out. I think it was he marked. Uh, the defender was beside him, but he was the defender's beside him. But he was trying to get the ball. The other, right hand side him. Yeah. And off balance as well. Can the defenders never get in the ball? Uh, goals to crosses again, Con. It's just, I mean, it doesn't matter who's in defence. I know it's always been like the last few weeks, it's been like, oh, we'll, we'll be okay when Portress is back, but well, no. Um, it's, and, and I mean, again, there's been a bit of blame getting passed about. They're all, they're all to blame, but I think it's like a, it's like a bit of deflection trying to pin it on Hanlon and that just because folk have been having to take it to the guy again because we're getting beat again. Um, because if you watch it, it's like the second goal. And folk are trying to blame the goalie for that. And I know the goalie's the last in the line of defence, but another defender running across like a striker, making Poaches look like totally, I was going to say amateur. Like it was, it was really bad, that second goal, from a defensive point of view. 
first goal as well. First goal was the one where TV said it looks like they're trying to play. Um, what do you call it? Zonal. Um, zonal. Aye, zonal. And when the goal goes in, they all just go, oh, whose fucking fault was that then? And look at each other because they didn't even care who to blame. Like, folk are saying we're not shouting at each other enough. There's no leadership. It's like, nobody knows who's to blame. Because if you look at that first goal, they'll look at each other and go, well, was it you? Was it me? I'm not sure. And and that's that's the biggest problem. I don't know if they've changed that this year. If we were zonal last year, I don't know. I don't really know. I can't even tell when I'm watching a game if we're zonal marking or man marking. Ah, so I don't no. know. Um, and and I'm sure everybody that's listening understands that we're clear. Like we're not uh, <laughs> managers, or, like tactical experts, right? So I don't know if we're zonal now and we were man marking last year. But something's changed because it's the same defenders that never let a goal in for crossing the league last year to let one in every week this year. No matter who we change and bring in. So, I, so I don't I, know if it's that we've changed or not. Why would we go zonal? Do you know why would you persevere with it? That would be the question I would have is if we'd gone zonal when it's not working. So, thinking back, like the, the goals we conceded to Mullerwell for the crosses, they, we had a man marking, like Gogic was meant to be on the, if I yeah. remember, on, on yeah. the boy that scored and, and was there. So, it wasn't like he was marking a space. It's just like, uh, it was like there was no concentration. This I don't know if it's a confidence thing, or maybe it's just just like a lack of concentration or whatever. But you can't afford to switch off like that against a team like Celtic. Do you know they? No. Well, they showed but we do it every week. Punish it, you, never mind against a team like Celtic. We do it every week. So I, I don't I don't understand. I, I just can't understand how it's happening. Like I'm sure Jack Ross is scratching his head around. Like or ho- hope he's doing more than that, but. It's like they've got to change up and they've just got to say, like, come on, guys, your punishment exercise. We'll just fucking stand in here until you used in a lot of going. Like on the training pitch. Aye. Aye. The, yeah, here. They, right, you better phone the wife, phone the fucking school <laughs> and tell them, you know, we pick the kids up because we're here all day. You're here all day. That's how you're on detention until we fucking sort this out. No, no, I'm at Mr. Ross. I need 24 hours notice before you can <laughs> keep me back that late. <laughs> no, Jane Deutsch, uh, listen, so I can't, I can't remember who mentioned I think it was down the slope. Had mentioned about Dodge winning a lot of headers in the box. Dodge undoubtedly wins a lot of defensive headers for his wins playing. I can't remember if we spoke about it or not, but we, or it might have been when we weren't on on here. But there was a manager. I was in the, the Secret Footballer book recently, or one of his books recently, and he was taught. And apologies if, if I have repeated if I'm repeating myself on on here, right? But they were saying he was saying, and everybody thinks it's Dave Kitson, so it'd be Stoker with Tony Pulis probably. He mapped it or it might be been Allardyce he was talking about, I can't remember, the, the map to where the ball goes for free kicks and corners, and he like a heat map almost, or a ball, yeah. the ball rather than a player. And they went, that's where we've got to stick our best header of the ball, every corner, because it's just a percentage game. So you're saying 60% of the ball has got to that front post area, we'll put Dodge there and he does it away. And I think that's what happened last year. Newcastle used to do it with Shearer. Like, the, you, you, have, you, have your, you have a good header of the, a good header of the ball, no marking anybody, just Aye, clearing the ball. Just that's where it lands. Most to clear of the time. And I think we are missing that. But then that's not to say we can't just stick somebody else here. Like, it's not, Aye, it's there not must, like we're there playing with 10 other, men now. Get what I mean? Aye, we've still got a lot of men. There must be other the decent headers on Aye. the, on the yeah. pitch. But then your centre halves are normally picking up the strikers in the middle. Yeah. So maybe that's a gap that has got in the in the squad. Because if you think about it, our midfielders are not particularly great in the air. Gogic is the one that you would think would be most likely because yeah, he. He was a centre half um, before he came to Hibs, yeah. So you would think he would have a a decent chance, but again, he doesn't even win loads of headers in the even in midfield. Gogic doesn't win loads of them. Yeah, yeah. Doyle Hayes and uh, Newell doesn't win loads. Nisbet doesn't win loads. So, mm. but it's, it's pure it's, I don't even know if it needs to be a good header of the ball. It just needs to be somebody that's willing to header the ball because there's generally no marking anybody. It's not like you're having to outmuscle anybody. You just need to be there. Aye, to get on it. In the way. Yeah. Aye, just to get enough on it to get out of the box. So, a doig or, you know, like, I know they might be back in the post and all that, but surely you stick somebody else back in the post then. Mm. Like, put me in there. I don't know. It's just like, it doesn't, feel, it doesn't feel like a difficult problem to me, but I'm sure it must be more complex than that, but it doesn't feel like it. It's like, see where Doig was used to standing clear the ball? Somebody else does it. I guess somebody's sitting there. But it's, uh, it's definitely a problem because Celtic, they got the two goals for the crosses, the third one, they just fucking 
Nisbet Nisbet gave it when they walked through us and Celtic to be fair could have scored another Mm. three or four they were trying to walk in Macy made a couple of saves they were trying to walk in you you said it was like um, was it FIFA? Ah, FIFA or Pro Ev when you you sweat it put it across the box once you've drawn the keeper out yeah Uh, aye and then we got the goal which was uh, again even the goal you take it but wasn't it (laughs) <laughs> it's a great goal, eh? Is it? Maybe um, off their seats to cheer it, eh? Port- Portis hit it off a yeah. boil and it went in. It's great. Yeah, it's there we go. Stay mm-hmm. off the training ground. <laughs> yeah. Aye, it was. It was just a rubbish goal, but I mean, it was a goal, was a goal. Um, and then it, it made them. I think they just. Uh, I think it's when you go and it's an easy game like that, and you go in at half time. It generally takes the heat out, yeah, doesn't it? You're Aye. kind of looking, going, just getting half time. Just getting half time because they've never got it. You're sitting there. How often have you been sitting at three nil at half time? You think this will probably finish four one or something Aye. like that. You know, you, you didn't go on and win six nil. I mean, because the intensity goes into the game and and you start making subs and you know what I mean. And, and you just knock it about a bit where you were attacking earlier. And that's what Celtic done, I think. Although we did come out a bit more on the front foot, like they were chasing things down. And the laddie came on for Gogic. Campbell came on for Gogic, didn't he? Aye, he did well. Um, I thought when he came on, I thought he done all right. Aye. Um, he done all right, and uh, they, they looked like they were closing things down a bit more. And there was a few more sort of diving in to to block a a, a clearance and stuff. Uh, but we didn't look like really didn't look like scoring. I mean, Murphy should have scored, um, but other than that, I don't think we had any other real attempts on goal. Uh, um, there was one a poacher shot for twenty five yards. It kind of was more like a pass back. Aye, but, so there was a keeper um, wasn't sure whether he was like the pick up, aye. <laughs> he didn't catch it, right? Yeah. Um, but that was that. That it counted as a shot on target, though. So mm-hmm. uh, we'll, we'll take it. But the the Murphy one was a big one because they they it's hard to then when you're cruising it and then you take the foot off the gas like that. If we'd went three two, it'd been hard for them to put the foot back on the gas. Aye. And we would have been trying. We would have got a lift, and the crowd would have got a better lift. So I think. I think that was a big turning point, more so, like I said already, than the new miss. Because the new old miss, everybody was going, "This is a fucking nightmare." Whereas that one, everybody was going, "Oh, yeah, fuck, are we back in this?" Aye, and it would be massive, even for. So you think third goal goes in for Celtic, and it's like fucking fire alarms going off. Everybody's streaming out. Kind of mean that yeah. it's been a lot. It kind of happened against Dundee United. That was probably the first time in ages I've noticed folk leaving as much. Early, do you know how when Dundee United scored the third? What was it about 15 minutes left or something? 20 minutes left, aye. And folk were flooding out. And by the time 90 minutes came against Dundee United, the place was fucking empty. And it was actually, for, if you wanted to miss the traffic, you were better hanging back. Um, <laughs> whereas Celtic had 20 minutes in, and you could see it was streams of folk heading out again. Yeah. It was a shy night, folk would have been annoyed because it was soaking wet and all the rest of it. But if we got it to 3 2. And then had the momentum behind us. One of these kind of pivotal moments that like you could almost take it in like a, in a season. If that goes a different way, so if Murphy scores and then we've got the momentum, the fans are getting engaged. If you then go in and get an equaliser, that, that result's massive for your season because you've got the fans saying, they forget about the shite first half. Do you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the ones that say they'll go, that was shite, but how well did we do to come back into it? Yeah. And that's what you start talking about. That narrative changes from being a fucking humping and everybody passed off to being we were three and then we got back to three each against Celtic. Yeah. Murphy misses the chance so and, and it's fucked again. And, and so you go, Aye. well, that that was shite finish. We had the shite finish uh, in the first half, shite defending first half. It's just a shite night all in. Yeah. Four defeats on the bounce. Yep. As well, which is the first time I think in Jack Ross's time it happens that that's happened. Um, what, where are you with, with, with Jack Ross at the moment, Colin? What, what are your thoughts on him? I'm still, I'm still uh, willing to support him um, based on based on what what how we've performed since he came in in terms of results. I know that there's a lot of complaints about the style of football, but. I'm no. I don't think we we'll play that bad football. When we play well, I think we play. I think we actually play some decent football. And yeah. the pundits tend to agree. It's, it's Hibs fans that a lot of Hibs fans that seem to disagree with that. Um, so I'm willing to say, came in when we were down in a in a relegation fight with Hearts and St Mirren. We got up to well seventh in the end because of the the points per game yeah. thing. Um, 
and then we went to comfortable third place last year and to Hamden, like both the well, three times. Um, to obviously discounting the results, but getting there, like you know, like mm-hmm. history, our lifetime, it's not exactly a we shouldn't be taking it for granted. Getting there, but we are starting to take it for granted a wee bit, I think. Um, so well, based on all of that, I'm willing to give them time to turn it around because it's it's four games. One was Celtic, one was Rangers, one was Aberdeen. It, it's no, um, and and that is obviously a stick that he's getting beat with that he's not winning big yeah. games. But the four games he's lost are against three three of the biggest clubs in the country. Right? Aye. Um, so I'm willing to. And then Dundee United, they're one of the fucking biggest six as well. Come on, I mean, it's not like it's not like we've been on a loss here like last year when it was Ross County and, and Livingston, and, that, and even Motherwell when they were playing well. You know, what I mean, it's like it's actual big, bigger teams in the league. So, although it has been, it's not just been narrow losses. Um, other than Rangers, which was unlucky. Um, I think uh, and Aberdeen. <laughs> Which was which was narrow. It was two doings, two doings, two four. Yeah. Um, so half of them. But so I'm willing to give him a chance. Long-winded answer. Um, but he, he needs to turn it around quickly because there's more in, and because of the style of defeats and and then all the other grumbles about big losses and no winning games at Hamden and all of that. And what the folk are starting, you can sense more and more people are turning them. The more level-headed people that are willing to think about it rather than the sort of irrational if you want but the, the sort of people that lose their temper a bit quicker Aye. have already lost it they're already there and they're not going to be turned around I mean there's folk already there's folk sitting in wait this season anyway mm-hmm. weren't there they were said that last year if he doesn't win the first three games of the season like we'll wait and see and he did so it was like right well he needs to win the first derby you know what I mean it's like and it just keeps knocking on and on and on so there's been folk lying in wait here for this to happen and if it carries on much longer it'll, it'll get a bit of momentum behind it Aye. I think, and we've been there before, you get to a place where you go, it doesn't matter what he does now, he's never got to turn us around with the fans. Um, and I don't think he's there yet, because I know it was just a wee hipster.net poll and that, but it was about 70, 30, 71, 29 or something, mm-hmm. which I know it's it's not like covering all the fans, but it's representative of the it's a fan base. Chunk, um, so I think it's still there. If he carries on losing, that'll quickly get to 50 50. Uh, and that's when you're starting on dodgy territory then. Because that, that noisy minority becomes a majority, close to majority. Um, and, and, and he'll struggle to turn the, the fans back around no matter what he does. Hammer's hearts on New Year's Day or third or whatever it is. Aye, but he never won the last time or he can't win. He can't beat Rangers. You know what I mean? It'll always be something that'll um, be used to beat him with. Um, we were lucky to win 7 0 because we've got a penalty and they got a man sitting <laughs> off. And, you know what I mean? There's always like a reason or an excuse for it. Um, so. Uh, Aye, I'm willing to give him a chance. Okay, so I'm, I'm more or less the same. I think, right? So I, I've been quite vocal. Like, I, th- I think he's a good manager. Like, fundamentally, I think he's a good manager. I think his career shows that he's a, a good manager. Like, if you look at his one percentage and all the rest of it, in saying that, though, the stuff that we would have defended him for, and this is, this, this is what I like, I'm not somebody who just kind of takes a stance and thinks, I'm not going to budge for the stance. Like, I very much. What does the evidence tell you? Can like if you're looking to say try to be as objective as possible with it. So he's gone in for a position like so if you take his one percentage, right? That's cracking in terms of how he, he uh, stacks up against previous Hibs managers. But then you take four defeats on the spin. So obviously that brings that down a bit because his, his one percentage takes a hit. There's another three big games, inverted commas, right? Rangers, Celtic, Aberdeen. Uh, in quick succession, that he's not picked up any points at all. Yeah. Um, and even so, even, even like the performances, this is a bit that I struggle on. Is like you can get away with the Ross County and Livingston shape performances last season if it's only the two, and then you, you perform well enough in the rest of the games that you finish third in the league, right? And by the time it gets to the season, then most folk, right, unless they're sitting on the fucking podcast talking about it all the time have forgotten it or they're hanging on to it because they don't like you, have forgotten about the two shape games because they go, didn't they fucking matter in the grand scheme of things? We finished third, it was about as good as we could have got. When it's four games, it's hard to, like, because you're, you're saying, how's it got to that stage where the performance is only really improving that much? So say, second half against Celtic, 
there was an improved performance, but with a huge caveat that Celtic had got the fucking cigars and slippers on by that point. Yeah. Um, so I can Jack Ross talked up, but and, and you would like if you're the manager, you try to find any positive to cling on to uh, on the back or, or anything like that. The Rangers game, and this is where if I try to be objective as well, right? And 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 distance myself for a wee bit about trying to give them solely give them the benefit of the doubt because that tends to be my starting point. But until we had the man sent off, we looked pretty comfortable. In fact, I thought we were probably going to score again rather than Rangers coming on tip. But then we did get a man sent off. And after that, we did do the league on Rangers. And you go, that that can't just be accepted. We can't just go, well, we're doing 10 men. So, okay, we'd be expected to get beat. The game against Celtic, and you can, I've used the argument loads about the difference in resources. Like Celtic having many multiples of the millions of pounds that we spend on players. But we've had shitter teams than the one we've got now compete with better Celtic teams. So it can be done. It's not like you can say we'll never beat Celtic and you can write you off all of them. So the, the, the more that run goes on against Celtic or Rangers or Aberdeen or Hearts where we're not beating them, the less that argument holds water, I think, because there, there should be a well, time. I agree, I agree. It. All I would say is, like, we drew with Celtic a few times last year. We yeah. ran Rangers closer than anybody when they were undefeated all season. So yeah. Nobody beat them. And and the draws kind of just got dismissed as like, but a draw with Celtic or Rangers is never been a bad result. Yeah, it's yeah. never been. A, you know what I mean? Um, and I and the Aberdeen one, that's back in again because we got beat. But mm. until we got beat, if we had beat them the other day, they wouldn't be classed as a big game. No. Because he would be more than fifty percent winning against them, and he's in his time here. So we're kind of dropping stuff in and out. The heart stuff's not been brilliant, but he did win at Tyne Castle. Mm-hmm. But but he lost. That they won the when a year ago at Hamden. So yeah. that's the that's the one that's killing folk. Like that one, and then the absolute hiding just before uh, lockdown. Aye, which which folk had to linger on, like for eighteen months or wasn't quite eighteen months, but a year. No, when did it was it March to August or whatever. Aye, the whenever the football was, started again, I can't remember. But... So that five months, you're sitting on that for five months, and then you didn't get a chance to. Turn it, you, you lose a derby, we've all lost and fucking lost plenty of derbies, but you get a chance again in about six weeks to the next derby to, mm. to get the bragging rights back. We had we had to wait seven months, eight months, and then we fucking didn't they do it when they're in the league below. So that's killed that's killing them. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely killing them in a lot of eyes. Um, and that's as much as the, the I think the, the big game chat I think putting Rangers and Celtic in there falsifies is enough falsifies the numbers, right? Because what would be your expectations of the Rangers and Celtic? Like, are we saying we should be waiting them fifty percent of the time or something? Is that what what are we expecting to see there? Like when we're looking at that comparison, because if you beat them once a season, you're, you're probably you happy. Well. Aye, right? but, once a season and a draw or something, right? But but so that that looks shit. Right, that doing. You're playing them four times each. So you're playing them eight times. You've got what two wins and two draws. That, what's the stats there? The win percentage or whatever stats you want to use is shite. But that would be good. Aye. If you've got two wins, uh, one, one win against I, each and one draw against each. I can, but then you look at... So then no, you so I, 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 I agree with you, but you... There's, there's enough that like we've, we've no beat them. Can really, we've no beat either, yeah. either of them yeah. in, in the time that Jack Ross has been there. And, and even like you look at how we played on Wednesday night against Celtic and we got pumped. Livingston played Celtic on, on Saturday. Yeah. No, no. Celtic had two shots in target. One of them was a penalty. Like, I, but I think that's the bit where I get frustrated when you go, right, I think you can just, like, it's reasonable. Can you imagine if we had gave them 85% possession or whatever it was Celtic had on Saturday and says, well, we've got a draw. Everybody would go fucking bananas because we only had 15% of the ball. There would be, but it's about There's finding... There's a balance a, there. It's about, it's so like, is it right to stand on the goal line or is it not? Aye, but it's about finding a way to get the result. Right. At some point, again, you need to say because we've done it. We've done it against Rangers and Celtic before, but we've we fucking had our backs to the wall and, yeah. and got the result. Can as, yeah. as much as we've had games where we've we've outplayed them and, and deserved to win. I think that that's about. So the more the stats like that, whether we agree with them or not, but the more those stats rack up against them, the harder yeah. it is to go. I fuck saw. I saw how it's all right. The biggest thing I would say, right, is. I think he's earned it. 
uh, the the chance to see out the rough patch. Because mm-hmm. I, I think if you're a, if you're a football club or fucking any kind of business, really, like, if you shit your pants at the first sign of trouble and change the manager and go fuck right, that's four defeats in a row. Press the button, get somebody else in. Every manager at some point that you have will have a run like that. Mm-hmm. Whether they're a good manager or a bad manager, they'll always have a fucking bad spell. And a team like Hibs, like a team of our size, you're always going to get it. And that's not sustainable. So you... I, I don't know if that's the expectation of a lot of folk now, because I think we've got loads of more money, because we've got a new owner. Uh, and so it's like, well, we can't, we, we shouldn't be losing four games in a row. It's like, well, it's only since Jack Ross came in that we've not lost four games in a row, because every other season I've been gone, we've definitely lost four games in a row. I saw some of the some of the people in Lennon's runs together uh, up on I don't know if it was now or the or the bounce for the, when I saw it, but it wasn't a good deal in the championship. Oh, no, no, so it, many games in the championship as well. Maybe never lost four, but definitely loads of draws against shit teams. It's really shit teams, eh? Um so I don't know, like I I'm I'm I am i suppose I'll always be supportive because I'm a Habs fan and you want the team to do well, and if I'd much rather keep a manager than constantly change managers. But I'm I'm a lot less like I'm almost at the point came if, if they say right, you woke up in the morning and you says Hibs have part of company with Jack Ross. A couple of weeks back I would have been like, I fucking really why have we done that? That's stupid. I probably would be less bothered about it if it happened now. Hmm. That's no, my, I see what you're saying. I see uh, what you're saying. But uh, I'm a bit concerned about folk just like the expectations in the first place. Um because, like Hibs fans supporting a club that make reasons for why third place wasn't an achievement last year. Mental. Um, and all that. And and taking all that away from him, or us, taking that away from us, not just for him. Um, expecting to be Rangers and Celtic, it's just like, why why we start to expect that? I mean, even expecting to be Hearts, we all want to be Hearts, but surely, mm-hmm. they, I mean, the Hibs fan, unless you, were, unless you lived through the 70s, would go into a derby expecting to be hurt because we've just never done it apart from the 70s and it's just fucking beats me um, to how, where the expectations how where they've came from and the expectations have came from I think that he actually gets us to semi-finals and finals and third place in the league so the expectations go up but... I, there's all this fucking nonsense about right so obviously you had the only the only like proper success in a cup competition if you win the cup right but there's relative success in cup competitions as well. And relative yeah. success is getting to a final is a relative because only fucking one other team has done better than you in that competition that season. And the semi final, same thing. Right? So there's four teams get to a semi final. If you're one of those four, you've done all right. Yeah. Obviously, it's not as good as winning. You can't just say, oh, that's accepting mediocrity no, or anything. It's just, fuck, but it's fucking reality. The so like game you, record would look much better if you had just lost to whoever played in the quarter final of the aye. cup last year. His big game record will immediately be better because right. he wouldn't get beaten, beat, getting beaten over the head with his Hamden record or his cup final. You know what I mean? The St Johnson stuff wouldn't have happened. So I, I we went out, we went out one 0 away to fucking Motherwell. Oh, Motherwell! It was Motherwell. Aye. And the penalties, we'll be off Motherwell penalties. His 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 cup record looks fucking great. And then he's he's uh, sorry, he's big record game. Big, big, aye, did they give us a big game? It's just the final. Aye. Aye. No, I mean it's it's just, and I don't like I don't like the way the stats are getting twisted and turned to, and and dismissed or ignored depending on what what the argument is. And I know that's how stats work because you can just use stats whatever you want. You're a manager. You'll you'll I... use them for and against. Somebody got a bonus or somebody gets sacked in the past because you, you can't because of stats and that's what they're for and that's what folk are doing here. And it's uh, I don't like it. I don't like the way it's. I don't. I, I, it's a selectiveness of the, the stats usage that gets me every year. So I go, fuck, you know, like, folk are, like I say, bend, bending over backwards to diminish the, the achievements just yeah. to talk about the finish third because Aberdeen didn't score a goal for about 10 games. That's how the league works. We didn't Aye. score no other games either. Aye. You know what I mean? It's like, can we, can we forget about the games as well? Because if we didn't take the games into account, then fuck me, we would have been even better. You know what I mean? It's like, you can't, you can't just dismiss that somebody didn't score a goal. There was so a. That's what fucking football works. There's sort of like an argument on, on how somebody was kind of refusing to concede that it's unlucky that Nisbet missed his penalty against Hearts. No. So you say that he's fucking at the other side of the barn and it's been stood, isn't it? Or, like, or did it go over? Aye. I so can't remember. It's fucking inches, isn't it? Aye. Mm. In, inches, if, if as much as inches that he's missed by. Verbal ball here. Aye. Then, uh, 
that's no unlucky. And you could argue, no, it's not as down to bad technique or whatever, but fucking hell, right? How harsh yeah. are you going to going to be? Uh, I, and all these kind of arguments that they crop up, they, it's always a reason why Hibs haven't been good that we've yeah. won. And when we've lost, the same rule doesn't apply to the team that's beat us. They've, they've was, won because they're fucking better. I, I get strange, like I do, because I, I, it's just a different mentality to me, because I'm, I'm more, I don't know if I'm, I'm obviously a glass half full guy, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm a bit like, it was the same when I played for a team. You go on the defensive, like when somebody's criticising you, like that's your natural reaction. Whereas we've actually got folk who support the team criticising it rather than going on the defensive. And I, I, I don't need to learn. My, my natural reaction is to defend it initially until right. I get to the point where you can't defend it anymore. But I, I would even just play in fucking what I played. Go 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 home and like I'd say to my man, go, how'd you go on oh, a fucking referee or whatever? And he'd be like, is the referee's fault every week? Is that? And I'd be like, fucking, and start arguing no. about it because I was like defending, like, I, how, why we got beat. And I, I didn't understand how if you support a team or you're a fanatic of a team, you, you want to criticize it rather than defend it. But that's what, you, that's you're spot on, right? So you only look at fucking any tweet that goes out for Hibs and you see the replies, and you're like, fucking hell, you, that's that's meant to be somebody that you like, or some, some fun that you like. <laughs> Uh, well, I didn't see any of that, fortunately. So uh, right enough, you're, you're not. I yeah. always bemuses me, Ken. You can put something something out and then they just get fucking slaughtered for it. You go, why do you like that team? Just, just <laughs> if you fucking hate them that much, why, why bother? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, talking of why bother, then, um, semi final coming up as well. Tickets on sales, I think, Hibs are, uh, for, for what I gather, the ticket sales have been flying off the shelves at the moment. Uh, Four thousand I read on the message boards earlier. Aye, which is uh, which is a bit disappointing. I, th- I think the, the worry for me is that Hibs will end up having to get tickets back to fucking Rangers. Like I just, it was always going to happen though. How many did we get? Question you know? 12,000, 12, I think, initial allocation. So, uh, well, to, uh, I wouldn't have thought we would have sold any more than twelve. Can you say an the initial there as if we could have got more? I don't think. We well, hey, we could. I think. I think there's another six. If we if we got to the twelve, Aye. there's an appetite Aye. for it. We would have got another six. Yeah, yeah, but we wouldn't have, you know what I mean? They, they could have given us some, but we would never have sold that many because we don't do it. We don't sell that many for semi finals. Even, even, even a Saturday morning Scottish Cup one, we, we're lucky to take 12,000 to a semi final. So I don't think, uh, I, I, I don't think this one in Rangers is really like, I mean, not because not they're good, but just because they're fucking hot. Like, it's just horrible. It's just a horrible atmosphere. And I think a lot of folk with kids in that might go, hmm. I mean, that's one of your regrets. We, we went to the, the cup final in uh, 2016 and we we normally would go, like, even my daughter that doesn't like football, she would come because it's cup final day and that. We left the two wee ones because it was like strangers, eh? You know what I mean? And, and obviously there was a bit of battle on the pitch and that at the end because it Aye. got beat, so they, they went a half. So, uh, in a way, but we do regret it because the wee one loves it and, like, you know, she wish she had been there sort of thing. But um, and she's a bit older now, obviously, five years on, but, I don't know if I want to take her to. I don't know if I want to take her to, oh, yeah. especially if we're in a wee box like that, like eight thousand or whatever we might sell in the end, to however many they'll go, forty thousand or thirty, thirty-five thousand or whatever they would sell in the end, because they didn't sell all their tickets for a semi-final either. We'll give them them back, but they only if if we sell eight thousand, they're not going to sell the other forty-four or forty, or whatever we'll get right. I don't know how. They, they just don't, um, unless they're playing Celtic. That's the same final with themselves. The Celtics the same. Mm. Um, they, they make a big fuss about it, but they didn't sell the same. The same is just an attract folk. It's it's not a great time of year, right? Month before Christmas and all that. I'm making loads of excuses here, but it's Rangers. It's a Sunday afternoon. It's on the telly. It's uh, it's a month before Christmas. It's just not going to sell well. The final, uh, even the final, the final six days before Christmas. If we were to get there, like uh, we'll sell more. But it's six days before Christmas. It's just a mental time to be playing games. I think. Um, but I would have expected more than four thousand to have went this quick. Aye. Gone. So kind of there was loads of notice for them going on sale. Like that that caught me out. So we can we yeah. we'll take oh. it from me, me and Josh. We'll go to it, like. Uh, yeah. This is highly, we don't beat the Hamden. Can we the Hamden? Probably we're talking about all the times that we were there last season. Yeah. As fans, we weren't there. Yeah. And it's like, fuck, I, I, quite, I quite enjoy a trip through to, to Hamden. Kind of be fucking freezing cold and all the rest of it. And like, say, was, the last one? was the last one the Celtic one? 
Yeah, when, on the, the Saturday night one. When when yeah, Heckenbottom um just before he got sacked, aye, it was aye, aye, it was shite as well. I, I suppose it doesn't help like the form they're in the now doesn't help. No, 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 that's yeah. not helping. If we were if we'd beat Rangers and all that, yeah, but we'd went top of the league, we would have probably sold more initially. But I, I still think we would have sold more than ten. You reckon? You can think you say the record, isn't it? I don't know what the it's, average is. We've sold in semi finals. We've been in plenty of semi finals in the last 10, 15, 20 years. League Cup semi finals. A few of them have been at Tyne Castle, of course, as well. But hmm. I bet. I, I think mean, like, I tend to think more of the Scottish Cup ones at, at Hamden yeah. but had but Falkirk with a decent crowd for that one. But then everybody expected us to win. Aye. Which makes Aberdeen a couple of times, didn't we? Aberdeen a couple of times. And we were, a, we were a good team then as well. We'd beaten Aberdeen, I think, as well before that. The season before we beat them at we beat them at Easter Road to make the longer score at Dundee United with a decent crowd, but I don't think we were anywhere close to a sellout for, for that one when yeah. on the way to the final. So you you probably got a point, but we tend to do better if it's at Tyne Castle or something. We'll, we'll, we'll always tend to think we take more than we do, I think. We always have higher expectations. But I think if you look back on bit if you looked at that, it was like this fucking one of the hearts the other day saying that they would take five thousand up to Pitodry and the Aberdeen boy coming and went. Well, the average 930 over the last fucking Aye, 10 they seasons. Did, so. They didn't even sell the, the 900 allocation at that. Did you see it? 30 or something. Aye. Aye. Fucking 5,000. So, You've never, never seen a fucking support go on about size more than that fucking no, bunch of. No, but, but we do have a, we, we do think we have more going to these semi finals, I think, or, or expect we'll take more than we do. Like, and, and we, But just, I don't think if you look at the averages that, that we have, Scottish Cup will take more because it's a Scottish. And then. It's springtime and all that by then as well, isn't it? So it's Aye. like you know, it's, it encourages folk to go a bit more. But the height of winter, November's the shittest month of the year. Like again, I've got that sad disease and all that. We'll talk about that in short bangers. But Aye. the uh, it's like it, it, it's just not got to draw folk, especially when you're on a shit run like this. Aye, but we're on the down the slope bus for it. Me and Josh. Mm-hmm. So I look for. I look. I look forward. To, I look forward to what she has at the best of times. Eh? Um. And that uh, semi final, you think as well, it's about 30th anniversary, wouldn't it, for the Skull yeah. Cup? It's the Saturday night, though, isn't it? Aye, just the Saturday night. I think if you mind, the semi final was against Rangers in that year, and there was very few fucking Hubs fans there that night as well. It was the same with the 2003 or year Aye. before, 2004, wasn't it? Aye, great enough. I wasn't at that one either, because it was my oldest first birthday that night. It was on Channel was 5. It? Mind, ah, I, mind, five, I, thought, yeah. I, I watched, um, I wasn't at it either. I watched it on the TV. Um, so I didn't go that night, but that was the that was that was again that was a wee box of and it's always one of the ones. It's like an I was there. Right? It's a badge Aye. for the for the, the the guys that go home and away. Um, so it's if, one of those ones. If nobody's given a fuck about it, is it a big game? <laughs> That's a good question. It's only a big game if he gets beat. If he gets beat, fucking hell, mental. Because then it'll be like, I bet his, his record against Rangers in the league isn't very good. Or Aye. imagine if you draw and go on penalties, it's like, well, it doesn't really count as a win because it's it. a draw and on penalties. <laughs> That's the kind of debate I can see it turning out. It would be good if, uh, if we didn't have to hand tickets back from him. Okay, that, Aye, that's that's, that's, that's thing. If you, if you go and say, because the, yeah. the other thing with that is next time, next time we get to a semi final, especially if it's against Rangers or Celtic, we might be in a much better position with how we play. Can we? We, we could so say it's the Scottish Cup where you've got Mueller coming in and uh, the boy Dylan Tate then plus whoever else was signed in January mm-hmm. it could be the squad's fucking flying by then you know like we've got players Dodge back for injury McGinnis is back mm-hmm. for injury we're playing well high up the league we've maybe maybe beat Rangers and Celtic on you know yeah. threat. and then you get to semi-final and everybody fancies the chances at the SFA go fuck it you're getting 10,000 and we'll give you all the rest to I, I, think they're, I think they're allowed to do it though. I think they're allowed to for the Scottish. I think they've got to, for the Scottish. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure there's something about it. You can you can go up and like Motherwell, and that'll go. We're not going to take anyone fifteen. So, can you keep reserve fifteen for us? And if we didn't sell, we'll Aye. give you some back. But I don't think they can just say you're only getting five thousand. Rangers sell it going a bit every year. But so, if if we were in a, a, a final against one of the well anybody uh, in, in May. They wouldn't be. They wouldn't be allowed. I don't think to do that. No, I don't think, it, I don't think for, so. I may be talking shite, but I, think, I don't aye. think they can. For a I final, we want to for a sponsorship and for the whole picture hang and all that. Saying, aye. Aye, we gave them a wee box there. Okay, they're not selling anywhere. Aye, we just decided they're only getting a wee corner. All right, you've given them the referee and the whole stadium. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
for for the final, I think we'd be all right. But for for the semi final, I think yeah, we would maybe. be. Because and, and the clubs did, I think we tend to agree with because the clubs get a split uh, both games. Yeah, it's not like they would go. You get I, half of the game. You get sell as many. It's yeah, a quarter yeah. of the, the total over the two. So, mm-hmm. I think I, I think it would be good for the players and that if they had fucking yeah, kind of a, a good turnout and all the rest of it. Yeah, but the the flip side is you could totally understand. It is understandable why well, the reasons four, four and defeats on the spin and, and the yeah. way that we've been playing, it's no fucking enticing, is it? Yeah, but Rangers haven't they? I mean, every game we've played Rangers over the last season and a half, they've been close games. Hi. So there's not like you're going in, it's not like Celtic would give us a do in there. It's not like you're going in going, fuck me, we've got to do in the last time. Every time we've played Rangers, it's been 2 1 or 1 0 or 1 all, and there's been a dodgy decision went their way. And every, we spoke about it after the Rangers mm-hmm. game. Every game we've went, if we'd got that penalty or if he had been sent off or if he had, you know what I mean? He got sent off and then he went and scored the winner. No, that came what I mean. There's been crucial big turning points in each of the games. So it's not like you're going in going, fuck me, they're unbeatable because they're clearly not. And and would do one against them. Well, they've got a shite record against us at Hamden as well, which is the other thing. So Gerard's got a sh- a fucking jinx and I touch wood because I've done this for the Scottish Cup final with fucking all well, the reasons why we would beat St Johnson. Anyway, I'll say it. Gerard's got a shite cup record at Rangers. Right, league record obviously has won the league, which is fair enough for him. Shite record in the cups. But Rangers have got a shite record against Hibs at Hamden. I can't yeah. remember the last time they, they beat us at Hamden. No, did somebody not say it when we drew them? Was it not like in the 70s? Was it no 79 was it or something? Something like that. Because the, the, the League Cup final they beat us when McCoy scored. That was at Parkhead. It was, aye. Uh, yeah. So you never know. It's just like one of those ones, eh? You think, fucking... It'd be good to go there. Even if they're fucking massively outnumbered, they go and turn them over, eh? That'd be fucking mm. draw. Well, um, they be massively outnumbered, even aye. if they sell 12,000. Because they'll get the other 30. Aye. Bastards. Uh Right, Ross County as well. So that game got postponed, and then uh, they're making us play on Wednesday night. What do you think about that? It seems a bit unfair on the face of it. I mean, I think somebody posted the rule saying the rule is you play the first opportunity possible. But I mean, you've got that—that's the rule in normal times. We keep talking that we're in not normal times. Unprecedented. Um, unprecedented, and all that. You know what I mean? So when's the court case? Uh, but I mean, it's it's like. It just seems unfair, especially when you're like you know, we're now saying we've got more positives, which you do wonder what happened there, like what happened mm-hmm. to the protocols and that. Um, but I mean, as I found it myself, like well, just before the, just before we done the live show, I thought I was going yeah. to have to call off. So, and and we done nothing, uh, like because the wife caught it, um, works in a school and all that, so it's just flying about, isn't it? And it, it's one of these things. It's it's just unlucky. I was fortunate I didn't catch it, and I was double vaxxed and all that, but. Um, so I could go about my business, but the the, the thing is with these, it's uh, what we up to six now. Six, they're saying now. A plus, you're four or five injured already. Okay, so I think they say it's double figures, and under 18s are getting drawn in, and and all of that. So I mean, we've not even got a reserve. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're past the reserves. We're into the under 18s. Aye. Do you know what I mean? I know we've not got an official reserve team, but I think anybody that's in a development contract seems to be planning to do it on loan, and we'll not be able to get them back. Um. It just seems a bit unfair, like mm-hmm. that, that they're making us play it, especially having to go all the way up there. I know it's all the way up there, and they have to come all the way down here every second week as well. But it just feels, uh, I mean, I was, I was I was close to back in Hearts last year when he came in, they had the, the league season ended because of COVID. Mm-hmm. I mean, they got relegated. Did that um, happen? No, nah, they got relegated and then, and so they got relegated and they said the reasons were, well, we had to finish the season because the season needs to end and we need to start a new season. And I think that one of Hearts and Partick's argument was, we just condense the season. Just like start, finish the, la- the end of the season at the start of the new season, if you like, and then start next season later. Yeah. And then we'll fit in the win. Now, there's not a free mid weeks. I and I said to you at the time. I remember it. I can. They're fucking lying bastards. There is plenty of fucking free mid weeks because we never play on a fucking Wednesday night. Like, well, apart from last weekend, but you know what I mean? We, we, we hardly, we, the whole season, play a midweek calendar. If you look at the Championship, League One in England, there's games on every week. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. Every fucking week of the year. And we didn't use the weeks. So all the, all the midweeks are free. 
But do you think it was uh, just thinking about the because I mind that his boy was on the sports side, no, off the ball, and he was aye, explaining he's, it. It was off the ball, aye. Uh, aye. Aye, he was explaining. Uh, and he said there wasn't enough for three, three weekends, three weeks or something. Then it was just bullshit. It, but I think it's it's maybe because uh, of the TV contract and the Champions League games. Can we? They're not allowed unless it's, it's on English football. It's Champions League this week. Aye, but the, the game's not on the TV. Right. Oh, right. Aye. So I've just got to fucking. Ignore me, because what I was thinking is, that if they've got to say that you've got X number of games that need to be on the TV, Aye. and therefore you, that rules out this day, that day, and that day, because you can't have them on at the same time as the, the Champions League. But then you're right, that only is applicable if the game that you're trying to play would have been televised, which Aye. us against Ross County wouldn't have been. So there's no conflict there. So then that date should then be available. The, the way your season's scheduled is a fucking joke anyway. Like I've already touched on there when the semi final is and when the final is of this tournament. But we, we start the season in July, end of July, when the weather's nice, July and August, September. That, it was only fucking recently I started wearing a pair of jeans to the football. I was wearing fucking shorts and a t shirt for the first mm-hmm. few games. And why would I play Wednesday nights then? Why don't I just rack the games up? We, we, we ram your schedule in December. When everybody's busy, it's fucking freezing, and nobody wants to go. And, the and, money. We, play, <laughs> and we play midweek games in December, and fucking, <laughs> and, and so we can have a month off in January. And that it's like, what, what, what are we doing here? Like, let, let's ram the games in then, and then let's put some air in in March and April when it's nicer again in the midweek and play the midweek games in. And we have all these midweeks free that we're saying we can't fit games into. So we'll play it this fucking week when you've no players, and you've got to play laddies. So like, surely there's some kind of fucking well. Sport and integrity or duty care to young laddies, they can't get kicked in on Wednesday night. Well, the, the duty, hi, the duty of care is a good one, but, but then the sport and integrity as well was worth uh, worth mentioning because I, I suppose if you put yourself in Ross, like say we were playing Celtic, for example, or Rangers, and it was them on Saturday and say, listen, we, we can't fulfill the fixture. Mm. Kind of as a support, we've got fucking fuck well, we've done it last year. Aye. The difference was they'd been away on holiday, and they were the, the jolly, so you were well, a bit less sympathy there. But if they'd followed all the protocols and that, I can we would be going fucking get great if we get a chance of the reserves, superb, yep. bring it on. Yep. So you can sort of see it from that point of view, but it's a bit tight again. You're, you're saying you're, you're putting young laddies in to that environment, they've not had a sniff of first team football, you would think, depending on who comes in. They've been on the bench. Well, who have had on the bench for the 18s? Maybe they, they've been kept separate because maybe there's talky bubbles and all that. They weren't Aye. even allowed. And they play on a Friday night and we play on a Saturday and they can't they can't do a 24-hour turnaround because they Aye. duty care, presumably. But now we're saying, fuck it, go and play against the big fucking cloggers up the road. Just go and play. So, okay, well, and we'll be missing folk for Saturday as well. So, I can Hibs, Hibs had suggested the weekend uh, before the semi, or the midweek before the semi-final, which was just on the back right. of an international break. So, we still would have been without some players, but we would have had kind of most of the squad back. Mm. At least they wouldn't be impacted by COVID. But we've got no fucking April to play this game. Huh? April. Like, we didn't need to fucking squeeze it in even in November. But we've got to fucking April. Let's say we'll, we'll play in the fucking 28th of February. You know what I mean? Well, they're in a hurry, Ross County, because they won last week. Aye. And they want, they've got, I think they've got a chance here at one, they're on, they've got a bit of run going one game. And one game. two, they're going to be weak. So that's why they want to play us. That's that's what it is. So they'll be pushing out of their end to say, "I fucking get the game on." Otherwise, if they had said, because it's there'd be no find out last year that the home team have a bit of um, not us like the podcast, but we got told it through the media last year that Celtic, the home it? team can change the fit. It was a Celtic game. They can change because they punted it to the Monday night, and we went, "Is it the fucking Monday night?" Mm. Celtic asked for it to Monday night. Hib said, "No." I but the home team choose then when when you can't agree the home team get to pick Aye. so I'm assuming this is what's happened here so it's Ross County that'll be driving this and the SPFL have went oh it's in the rules you know like Aye, Ross, Ross County could have, they could have agreed to a different uh, a different yeah. date and if no so and if we had been at home we would have said now nah, we'll move it and then we would have got the choice Aye. presumably we will punt it into next midweek because who have we got next midweek Dibsy. so Oh, funny that, eh? Because <laughs> there's never a fucking game midweek. So, <laughs> say, so there's so many fucking... Mind you, it'll be the international break, is it? After Levy. Aye, so but Ross... Will go. Maybe that's the week we're talking about. Aye, maybe. Because Ross County will not have anybody away for the national duty, I think. And we would just play with it. 
can we've been doing uh, it anyway. Can uh, Kevin Nisbet's an internationalist, so we've been playing with him for weeks. Aye, and who else? Might be some of the 19s and 21s, a dog and that maybe a wee bit. We've got Stevenson that can step aye. up and all that. So, so aye, I mean, there's fucking loads of midweeks. I bet we could sit down after this and go, how many midweeks are free Bef- between now? I think when they say, oh, there's not enough midweeks free. I had that boy on the radio that you were talking about there last year, and he was talking shite about it, saying that there's, oh, if there's a game cancelled that week, there's only one possible aye. Uh, available slot, and you're going, what about me? We didn't, we didn't ever play midweek. I think what they mean is, when Rangers... Rangers and Celtic are in Europe. So that kind of count then. Nene us are in fucking Europe, mate. And Nene, these teams that are playing are in Europe. So Aye. Rangers and Celtic might have a fixture challenge. We don't know. Aye, the rest of fucking the... Tuesday or Wednesday night. Aye, or a Thursday. Fucking did muck about with them Monday a bit. Monday night. I have a Monday night, whatever. Um, aye, I reckon Hibs obviously fought it. And was just running at the back wall. But it's not the first time I can Hibs, Hibs and Shaft. And I wonder if it was ending the day with. Uh, can Hibs and other clubs asking for that Deloitte to do a review? Or the festival? Fucking, you'd be surprised. Then. I'm firmly pinning it on uh, Ross County because they're the home team. They can. They're the ones that can say the home team can do what they want. That's what they said last year about Celtic. So I think they're they're just opportunists for this. Okay, perfect. Play the game, and they're kind of out there saying, "Oh, I feel sorry for the Hibs fans and all that." But I think uh, that. They're not that fucking sorry for us. They're the one to get us up there and and get the young laddies out. And and you could say, oh, it's a chance for them because you know it's like two thousand and one, two thousand and two again when when they started having to play play the young right. laddies. And it might one or two might break through. However, I would have suspected if somebody was close to breaking through, they would have already been on the bench. And two, our coach team when they get fucked out of the cup, they go into. Mm. Um, as well because they were playing against men in the tournaments and the coach team get emptied as soon as they're in it don't they so I'm no I'm no holding out any hope for that I hope somebody comes out and does a job a centre half maybe or uh, or a striker ideally because like, that's what really it depends who's aye. missing that's it that's it I really can he's uh there might be it. boys that were on the bench that are missing he might just be filling the bench with the 18s and it's still like uh, other than Hanlon it's uh, who, well we don't know who it is do we we don't know who they are, but we think. No, it's not being confirmed um, anywhere. But if it's, we'll see when the team's picked, I guess, who's missing. But say, say it was a centre half, say it was Hanlon that was out, and say it was um, fucking Nisbet. Did Nisbet have, Nisbet have it already? I can't remember. Um, mm-hmm. but he did. Thank then you. you're going, you know, you're, you're going, right, well, we'll stick fucking wood in again. And, you know, and then the bench is just full of the young laddies. So it's not actually, then you might just not make any sums. Mm-hmm. But you, you don't know who it is. So until, until the team comes out on Wednesday night, half six or whatever, it'll come out. That's when we'll go, oh, it's him, it's him, it's him. It's I can't. Everyone will go back. Medical, medical Guess who? <laughs> it's like, hi. Oh, it was fucking him. I'm like, hi, he's, he's injured. He's not feeling well. well. It brought up an interesting conversation. It's interesting. It was Craig uh, that brought it up uh, about players in double vac- being double vaccinated mm-hmm. and the impact of them. So Pretty much any player who's double vaccinated and returned a negative PCR doesn't have to isolate, so they'd be available. Yeah, because it was but, the same as me with it. Yeah. Aye, but if they've if they've only had one uh, jag or, or no jags, they have to isolate. Yeah. Would, would you think a club stands on that kind of thing, or, or it depends what's the contracts? I aye. guess I don't know what's in it. Even if we take it like where where we work, what what would happen there either? I mean. Obviously, a lot of us are working from home now, but for, for jobs that where somebody's in the office or in, in work, like, a, I don't know, a joiner or something that works for a big joinery firm or a plumber or whatever, if they've chosen not to be double vax, which is their choice, that's fine. If you're then having to isolate when you're negative because you've chosen not to get double vaxxed, do you get paid? Because you can't attend your work when... When you you know what I mean? Have... I think that's the question that, that might be in the contract, and I don't know what other people's contracts look like for that point of view. If if I was to test, if I was to, if I was in a double vax and I was positive, eh, negative, I would just work full, right? So it's fine. So I would get paid. But for jobs like fucking, a Hibs player can't work for home Wednesday night, right? And mm-hmm. and a joiner can't even work for home because well, unless they're working in the rain house, then they can't. So I think. I wonder what contract. I wonder what job, uh, contract law and that says about that. Because I would well, have thought they've chosen not to be. I don't know. I don't aye. know. Like 
It's your choice. It's your choice, but if you do it, you're not paying you. There's a so there's a kind of compared my last job that, that, that I worked in. There was somebody in the in in my team who so height of lockdown, right? You when you weren't allowed folk around your house or anything like that. Had a pal go to stay over with them, right? Mm-hmm. Pal was positive. So then they had to isolate. So they broke fucking they broke law yeah. effectively, kind as it was at the time. Yep. And uh, then couldn't they then, so we were all working from home, but they'd left the laptop in that. Uh, you know, like the, the, the kind of partner's house or something like that, right? So they couldn't go because of the ISA, they couldn't go there to get the laptop to work 10 days yeah. uh, off, pretty much. And our HR team at the time said, I just need to suck it up, I need to pay them. Uh, really? we, we, asked, we asked the question, so like, well, listen, that's totally self inflicted. There's no reason, can no good reason for them to be missing work other than with the laptop back, eh? Well, Not somebody me. could have dropped it off or something, eh? But aye, uh, got it. Uh, well, <laughs> uh, but HR, like the HR team, were like, okay, okay we just need to, to deal with it. But then, mm. that, was, that was when it was a bit more sensitive time. So, uh, that aye, that, at the beginning, everything was a bit touchy feely about it, weren't they? Correct, you know, aye, they were correct. The mental health and and everything was all always a bit like everybody was finding their feet, and so HR would have been been playing it safe there. Aye. I think now, now the vaccine's out a year on. A year and a half on since you're probably talking there. Yeah. I think they would be a bit. I think they'd be a bit tighter on it and say, "Nah, that's not the rules, mate." I, I mean, you had you had an option. You chose not if you're enough, but no fucking paying you because you can't come in. Aye. It's like any other time you say, "I can't, I can't come in to work today." Okay, you know, you know what I mean. You're, you're not upset. There's nothing wrong with you, but it's like if you're off a hangover, eh? Maybe it's sympathetic if you're off a hangover because it's you, you. You made the choice to go out the night before. Some, some people leave. I mean, I, I mean, my mum worked with somebody that was wanting to. She wanted holidays and they wouldn't give her the holidays. It was, she was going to go and see Barry Manilow or something, right? She was a Barry Manilow fanatic and she'd went everywhere. And uh, they went, can I get the holidays in? She went, she's not fucking coming in then. Eh? <laughs> like that, I thought, well, why was I not sacking? I was only <laughs> young then, but I, I still thought, who the fuck are you going to get sacked? But I presume they just docked her pay. She just went, well, you don't fucking come in, you need to get paid. I be and little. that's effectively what's happening here. Yeah. I know, I know there's a bit more political about it with the. Should you get vaxxed or should you not? Know but then there is a lot of rumours about players not getting vaxxed, not in Hibs, but just throughout. Just in uh, general. general. I can't uh, understand why you wouldn't see if you're in that line of work with your close proximity mm-hmm. with folk all the time. And yeah. again, there's a stuff is yeah, you have to be socially distanced for or close yeah. contact for a certain period of time for the, the risk. But surely, if you can, you were going to be in that sort of environment with teammates and everything. You mm-hmm. think, see, for every, not even for myself, but see, for every other camp. I'll get it yeah. so that I'm not coming in and necessarily spreading it about everybody. No, it's, a bit, it's a bit strange. I mean, I would have thought we would have tipped over the edges the vaccine passport's required to get in a nightclub. I thought that might have made them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll get it now. Okay, so sorry. Uh, it? <laughs> <laughs> that's a great shout. Uh, I interesting one. I kind of folk have all different views on it, and that's quite like an emotive subject, isn't it? And I, I'm totally pro choice. Kind of, if somebody wants to choose not to take, no, no, yep. no take it, then. That, that's entirely up but to them. But I'm, I'm just like, here's, if you don't, it. here's what happens. Aye, that's it. When, when, when there is, mm. when there is that forward, you can't go to your work or, and it could be. Can this is the thing? Is that that decision not to get the vaccine? And we're talking hypothetically, because they can. Anybody has it. They all might be double vaccinated for all I can, yeah. right? And, and so it is totally hypothetical. But it could be this week where we've, we've got to feel the weekend team against Ross County on tonight, Livingston on Saturday. Say we lose both of those games, right? It's six points. So you're talking. That could well cost has the manager his job. Is that what you're going to say? Well, that a manager's job. But that's it. those six points could be the difference between a European mm-hmm. place that would net us yep. however many hundreds of thousands of pounds or a top six place that does it. Or can, if the season goes fucking shite, yeah. it, could, it could relegate you. Do you know? Yeah. It's, it's huge. You, and, and you need to. There needs to be a recognition there that you can't just fuck about with that kind of thing. You've got a responsibility. So, yeah, aye, interesting, interesting is the discussion. Ken's probably no for for us to because we're fucking idiots. Say, but I did a short bag as well. A whole more gravitas. You said in your questions about vaccines for Thursday night, please. Well, I'm doing yeah. Thursday. Oh, 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 we've, we've, we've got we've got we've got an episode for Thursday already. Um, so just on the subject of that, with the vaccines and that, there was uh, 
bus. I can't. It must have been America. It looked like American bus that had said it was like a health thing. Like some some kids have strokes. Right, be aware, kids have strokes. And the person's going, oh, they're fucking normalising kids having strokes as if it meant because <laughs> now if they plant that seed stuff. now that when it starts happening because of the vaccine, folk go, oh, kids have always had strokes. Like yeah. like folk are going, we'll, we'll, we'll plant that seed now just in case. And what was the other one that I saw? Um, Aguero, Ken Aguero was, uh, had breathing difficulties or something, didn't he, on the, the pitch? Did you see that playing for no. Arsa? No. So Aguero had breathing difficulties. I think it was on the pitch. Anyway, he's out for months. There was a wee thing flashed up on Twitter earlier. But one of the headlines said, Aguero has breathing difficulties just 12 days after, or no, just, just a week after suggesting 12-year-olds should take the vaccine. Oh, right, I think he so. Like, how, how's that fucking great? If you're just saying, looking, has, yeah. has, uh, has breathing difficulties the day after intensive fucking training and, yeah. yeah. you know, dead hot Spanish heat. Or the day after having a fucking steak for his dinner, you could pick anything he'd done and, and just fucking tie it to his fucking nonsense. But folk are over it, eh? Yeah, I'm away. I'm not on social media, like so. I'm glad because I can imagine it would be just because it's it's that it's similar to what we we're talking earlier. It's that that minority because that's what it is. The anti-vaxxer, isn't it? I mean, we're talking like what? I don't know, I don't know what the numbers are, but it was well over seventy percent vaccinated. I think. Aye. The it's just a vocal minority that go on and on and on and on and on until they think they've won the argument like they're going to shout over thing when you kind of get a word in and all that like in real life Miller, the guys that shout <laughs> over you aye oh I didn't get my Molly Miller we never mentioned yeah. that at all eh? no if they would have... <laughs> you're, you're doing the Richard Gordon but they're going just aye. Like, like, we'll move on we'll move on <laughs> just after Willie Miller shouts over Leanne Crichton because she's got a sensible fucking point to make and he's gone willfully misunderstanding and everything um, aye uh, by the way, I'm making a fucking arse with their 9,000 thing, eh? Aberdeen. What are they doing? Aye, fucking nonsense. Like, they're just... losing money. Like, Hearts could have sold that place to themselves on Saturday. Like, as they've said. Robbie Nielsen, and, aye. Because they're on a, a four-match winless run as well. But the... the aye, I don't know what they're doing. Like, look, look at Hibs and... The Willem Hill's going, well, they've got fucking... They've got loads of folk at the rugby the day. And like... Aye, they're checking their passports for them. Aye. Like, do you know fucking get this? He thinks it's only applies to football, eh? <laughs> fucking hell, man. He's an absolute fucking clown here, man. Just retire. <laughs> Just retire gracefully. Or disgracefully, probably now. You've waited your... too long. How long do you think they're talking about this on the uh, off the ball? I <laughs> <You> know. <laughs> That's actual factual, eh? Actual factual. Uh, oh, what was I going to say there? Uh, fucking completely gone. I can't remember. Probably Miller... Uh, Leon Craig, uh, Leon Craig. Political. Oh, it was at Hearts Aberdeen. Did you see the thing where uh, Aberdeen's school, Ferguson school, with Scott Brown shoving the boy? No, I've not seen it yet. Right. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I know that I want to blow smoke up fucking Aberdeen's arse or Scott Brown's arse or whatever, but it was against the Hearts, so I guess extra kudos. So basically there's a bit of grappling in that going on. I think it was a corner of a free kick that Aberdeen have got. And Ferguson makes a run for the back post, pretty much ruined past the penalty spot to the front post, right, where he scores from. Mm-hmm. As he's running, he's got a marker, and what Scott Brown does, he's standing beside another Aberdeen player, and he just goes fucking push, pushes the Aberdeen player into the point that's marking uh, Ferguson. Right. So he, he's just back like that, he clatters the, the marker, Ferguson's then got a fucking clear run in, score, gets wins the header. It was like, a hey, typical Scott Brown shit house today, but fucking time to absolute perfection. Like the whole aye. thing about it, you're going, fucking hell. Is like, Straight for the training ground. Aye, it's like, you don't care if he's worked for it or if he's just spotted the opportunity, just go, fuck it, push. That's a different opportunist. Aye, thing, but you, you, should, you should watch it back, just watch out for, uh, watch out for Scott Brown. I did start watching about. a bit of the game on Saturday and then they got a penalty and I thought, oh, fuck off. Like, every aye. time I did, they tell you, it's got a penalty, so I just turned it over. Halliday <laughs> um, uh, getting sent off as well. After oh, the fucking so that, slot, I had it back on by then. Aye, it's slaughtered port just for it, and then he done the exact same. He got up and argued about it, and I thought, go and listen to yourself last Aye. week. Fucking dick. Mm. Anyway, right. Uh, prediction for Wednesday night? Oh, it's hard, because you don't know what the team is. It could it could pretty much, it could still be the team that might have played on Saturday, other than the two that, that tested. Um, uh, oh, it depends how many under-18s are in. The more they're in, the less chance we've got to win in. 
um, if there's one or two we can carry them. Just totally guessing here. Totally get. And it's not, there's no even an educated so, guess. It's just a guess. <laughs> one all. One all. I think it'll be one of these games, right? Where Kevin ever, everyone's racked up against you. Aye, that's what I'm hoping for. Aye, I think it'll go to a favour. Just one. But it depends how many of them are in, mate. Because the more the young laddies that are in, the less chance we've got, as has been shown with these Colts teams and all that. In the past. Well, see, I don't, see what I think will happen, right? It's like having a team goes down to 10 men and everyone come ups their game. Aye, you know, aye. it's like so, some, you some, no, all, all the time, as we saw against fucking Rangers, right? 10 men, then we lost the game. But you see it so often where there's that bit of adversity and everybody else, it's like that they double the work. And mm. that's one of the things that, that's been missing for the Hibs the last few weeks is that fucking work rate. Yeah. And I reckon, see if it's like Stevenson, Hanlon, McGregor, right, or Purchase McGregor, can players like that that are coming in they're having to watch the young laddies. They'll, they'll, they ever and they kind of make sure. It's like when we had to go and play mm. Stevens in the centre half at Ibrox, yeah. and we went and one yeah. kind of the, the team was missing loads. Yeah, and then was that when Porteous made his debut? I Porteous made his debut. Yeah. Barker Barker went off injured after about ten minutes, and that one came. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. I know, I know what you mean. And we didn't have think Castle before when Ryder and got the the Castle goal. The, the ghost penalty. Um, but it just this depends. Like if we're sick, if it is as many as that, I mean we've obviously got the injuries anyway already to the whole spine of the team. Aye. And then and then you get a few COVIDs. And I don't think they're saying one as a coach and that as well. So the numbers might be getting inflated. Maybe Hibs are making Marriott, you know, saying <laughs> fucking 10, 12 players out so that um to to put the pressure on to get the game cancelled. Maybe it's it's players that might not have played anyway, might be subs that, you know, so you might see the team comes out and you go, Ah, oh, it was just they two that had it then. Aye. You know what I mean? Um, like if Dre Wright starts, you go, I oh, do well, definitely Murphy then. You know what I mean? Because he would never have started ahead of him normally. Um, but we just need to see what the team is. I, I, I'm hoping what you're saying is going to be one of them, but you totally didn't expect that. And one one no helps against the Wolves for and go and get a dodgy penalty or something to, to win it or a, a, one, imagine if we scored one for a corner. Eh? Imagine that. Aye. Rather than let one in. Aye. I think Oxley still kick yeah. up the back for uh, Macy. I wonder if the one day we could have got these games cancelled was making getting the goalies exposed to it because then if you're out of goalies they can't make you play can they so I'm assuming no. the goalies are all right. otherwise Aye, the, the can because mine did the boy Stevenson had to Brian Stevenson played the goals for Wraith didn't he I know I know but I don't think they would that was like I can't remember the exact circumstances of that I'm sure that was injuries because they, they wanted an emergency loan and they weren't there. Either they couldn't get one in or they, they, they weren't allowed to. I can't remember whether what happened, but anyway, they they were like, Well, we need to play something, goals, so they just put a player in. I know, but there was the, their argument wasn't just that, it was more about there was timelines involved and stuff. Whereas oh. this is like, this is, a, this is an unprecedented times we're living in. Um, <laughs> and you really could have been and I don't know I don't know I, I'm assuming the goalies are alright or we would have we would have heard about that by now we would have been saying we would have been going emergency loan routes and that. aye well I'll go one now Habs you say what one each no no just I, I need to wait and see what the team is like I really I'm just guessing I'm going one all when I'm hedging my bets but when I see the team wins tonight I'll send you a text you can tweet out <laughs> I'll do that right <laughs> Uh, back with short baggers on Thursday, so watch out for that. They need to send us in questions this week. Uh, if you do, we'll just carry them over to the next again because we've got that episode already good to go. Uh, and then, well, I should be do something quick bang after uh, Ross County. Yeah. Aye, yeah. That's all coming first. So watch out for that on Wednesday night after the game. Uh, until quick then, bang we'll, Saturday again. Aye, quick bang on Saturday. Until then, we'll catch you later. Oh, well, they trailed me down when I broke free I drank all the whiskey in Tennessee I don't drink water, no, no